to be finding out a little bit about each of the carols that we're singing this morning, and I'm in charge of that. So um, the choir is not singing this morning. Instead of that, we are going to be singing Joy to the World. It is found on page 267. And not yet, Kay. <laughs> First, a little bit about the, about the hymn itself. Since 1719, Joy to the World has been a Christmas staple. Its lyrics were crafted by Isaac Watts, and to date it remains one of the most published carols and hymns in North America. However, the fun fact is that the song wasn't even intended to be a Christmas carol, as its original version had no link with Christmas whatsoever. It wasn't even supposed to be a song. According to church history, Isaac Watts was one of the most prolific and celebrated creators of hymns. However, his most famous creation, Joy to the World, was born of confidence rather than desire. In 1719, he published the Psalms of David, a collection of poems where each verse was based on a psalm. But instead of translating the original text of the Old Testament, he made some subtle adjustments. And the majority of the hymns of the Psalms of David have now fallen into obscurity. But his poems referred more explicitly towards the works of Jesus Christ, thus seeking inspiration from the New Testament. And so today we sing a popular and one we all know, Joy to the World, which started its journey in our music stratosphere. Now we go. <laughs> rejoice. It's a medi medieval Latin or German folk carol used in civil and domestic celebrations outside of liturgical mass. Music was written sometime in the fourth century and arranged by Robert L. Persall 
in the early 1800s. The text was originally written later by Cyril Arlington and later translated by Mason Neal in the Oxford Movement for Modern Use. There was some controversy over the first line of the carol, including the word men, now changed to friends. But the original Latin does not refer to men or people at all. Let's sing Good Christian Friends Rejoice, number 288. <laughs>
1951, known for his calligraphy and being a successful musical copyist, he penned, O Come All Ye Faithful, and gets credit for writing this song. Let's sing. Majestic is your name in all the earth. You who glory in the heavens above the heavens, out of all the kinsmen and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foes and avengers. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. Majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray together the prayer that is found on the front page of your celebrate insert. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son, the holy name of Jesus, to be 
be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Many years ago, Harvey and Susan Andel were at a Christmas party at the Mickelson home. And they started singing Christmas carols, even if they didn't know all the words. Tara and Trista and Ty were probably just getting out of high school. They had a blast. And today, I invite Harvey Andel forward, and he is going to try and bring back some of those memories in honor of Trista. Mickelson Hodges, who is battling cancer. Well, this has been many years ago when this happened, and we didn't care, we didn't know the song, we just made up some, but we had fun. So I'm just going to go over a couple of these that we, one-liners here. Joy to the world, and we go on. Hark the herald angels sing, wa la 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 la. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Oh, Tannebaum, oh, Tannebaum, the eins, the eins, the open shoe. that Trista is listening and is blessed by your music today. Our first reading this morning is taken from the sixth chapter of Numbers. God had commanded Aaron to say these words, known as the Aaronic benediction. 
function in the blessing of the people of Israel. Beginning with verse 22. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. Our second reading this morning is taken from the fourth chapter of Galatians, and Paul proclaims the ultimate significance of the nativity. Jesus was born the Son of God, so that because of him, we may all be God's children. Beginning with the fourth verse. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir. Through God, the word of our Lord. This ends our second reading. Would you please rise for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of Luke. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it, were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all those words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The words of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. St. Augustine is credited for having said, He who sings praise twice. One of the most joyful sounds of the Christmas season season is the singing of Christmas carols. There are well over 10,000 songs about or for Christmas. Since the average song runs about three and a half minutes in length, you'd have to sing Christmas songs 24-7 from December 1st to December 24th to sing them all. You might even need a throat lozenge or two. (laughs) Like many traditions, carols weren't originally for Christmas. The word carol originally meant to dance, or indicated the song dance too. The first Christmas carol came about A.D. 129, just 30 years after the death of John the Evangelist. The Bishop of Rome at the time decreed that in the holy night of the nativity of our Lord and Savior, all shall solemnly sing the angels' hymn. The lyrics, glory to God in the highest heaven and on on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests, comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 14. The 
earliest carols were sung and written in Latin, making it difficult for many to understand them, and therefore much less popular. However, in 1223, when St. Francis of Assisi began his nativity plays in Italy, songs and canticles sung in the language of the people watching told the story of Jesus' birth. This helped spread the new carols throughout Europe. Not everybody thought well of the carols. In the United Kingdom, Oliver Cromwell and the Puritan Parliament outlawed the public singing of Christmas carols in 1649. He banned Christmas celebrations too, but most people continued singing carols in secret, so the songs survived. After Cromwell died in 1658, the restoration of the British monarchy abolished all legislation enacted from 1642 to 1660, so Christmas was once again with feasts and festivities and carols, thus hymns written to honor the birth of Jesus began to appear once again and have continued to this day. Unlike retail stores today, which began playing Christmas music in October or November for sure, carols were intended to be sung during Advent, the period observed the first four Sundays before Christmas until Christmas Day. Christmas's conclusion is marked by the Feast of the Epiphany, usually January 6th, the day when Christians celebrate the revelation of baby Jesus and when carols often stopped. So what makes a carol a Christmas carol? They are commonly defined as uplifting melodies with minor or diminished chords, such as God rest ye, ger ye merry gentlemen, centered upon the birth of Jesus and focusing on the story of hope and joy and humility. So today, in addition to the scriptures that will be read with each song, we will get a little history lesson with each carol that we are singing. Our first hymn today in this part of our service will be Hark the Herald Angels Sing. As I told you a little bit ago, as a result of the Parliament ruling, Christmas hymns and carols were scarce. Between the late 17th and the early 18th century in England, but Charles Wesley's Hark the Herald Angels Sing was one of the few written during that time that became popular whenever and wherever Christians gathered during Advent. After he died and the monarchy was restored, the former decision to prohibit the singing of Christmas carols was abandoned, and thus hymns were written to honor the birth of Jesus and began to appear and have continued to this day. Wesley's Hark the Herald Angels Sing is one of the most popular Christ Christmas carols today. It can be heard in both of the classic films, It's a Wonderful Life, and also A Charlie Brown Christmas. But did you know that the carol is completely different today than originally written? And the words and tune have actually been changed. The first line of the hymn originally read, Hark, how the welkin rings, glory to the king of kings. Welkin is an old English word that means vault of heaven. And in 1753, George Whitefield, a famous English preacher rewrote that first line of the carol into the modern version of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. And this, of course, is how we will sing it today. Let's sing hymn 270, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
to John, first chapter, verses 3 through 5. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Our next hymn will be on your page 292, Love Has Come. The original tune to this carol as a French melody was composed by 17th century composer Tom Fretke and was entitled Bring a Torch. And it wasn't until 1950 that the words were added and the name changed to Love Has Come by Ken Bible. an American hymn writer, James R. Murray, entitled the tune to Away in the Manger as Luther's Cradle Hymn. Murray further stated in his popular songbook, Dainty Songs for Little Lads and Lassies, that Martin Luther had not only written Away in the Manger, but had sung it to his children each night before bed. As the song spread across a growing America and people began to sing it at home, in churches, and at schools, they often envisioned legions of German mothers rocking their babies to sleep each night with the strains of a way in the manger. As it became more popular, some news reports even trumped and trumpeted the song heritage and the powerful inspiration that obviously could come from only the great Luther himself. But ironically, not only did German mothers of this era not sing Away in the Manger, they had never even heard of it until it arrived in Europe from its country of origin, the United States. 
Collins, a writer, goes on to say that the song was probably written in the mid-1800s by an anonymous American, and later the tune was composed by J.E. Clark, a man known as Charles Hutchinson Gabriel, music director for the Great Methodist Episcopal Church, published a new version of the hymn that included its third verse, and the legend of the song being written by Luther continued to grow as passing decades brought to their new century. Let us sing Away in the Manger, page 278, verses 1 and 2. Verse 14 of Luke. 
the historical context sheds some light. Massachusetts native Edmund Hamilton Sears earned a degree from Harvard Divinity School and was ordained a Unitarian minister, serving congregations throughout Massachusetts. He put it well. The hymn's central theme contrasts the scourge of war with the songs of the angels, peace to God's people on earth. He observes that this is one of the earliest social gospel hymns written in the United States, and the movement gathered strength as the 20th century approached, influenced by the writings of Walter Rauschenbusch and hymns such as Washington's Gladden, Washington Gladden's O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. The current stanzas of this hymn talk about beneath life's crutching loads, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Hark the herald angels sing, should be joyfully sang, along with joy to the world each Christmas season. But always there are moments when we realize that the message of peace has not been fully realized on our earth. And then we sing, it came upon a midnight clear, and the power of the incarnation and the message of the gospel touch us even more deeply. Let us sing verses one and two of it came upon a midnight clear. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Go tell it on the mountain, tells us who sang the first lines of this hymn, because the original author and lyricist was an enslaved African American. We don't know much about the people responsible for bringing this song to the rest of the world in 1907. John Wesley Work, Jr. compiled and edited a number of songs, including this one, in his songbook, Jubilee Songs and Folk Songs for the American Negro. The Jubilee Singers started out in 1871 as a band of young people led by George White and Ella Shepard. They went on a mission, raising money for their university on a singing tour through the state cities of the North, lasting 18 months. They began by performing only traditional hymns, and when their money ran out, they had to scrimp 
to get coats to protect themselves against the cold northern winter, but they kept going. At last, three days before Christmas, the tide turned. The choir had run out of funds when the most famous preacher of the day, Henry Ward Beecher, invited them to his church, and they began to sing the songs of their hearts, including Go, Tell It on the Mountain. And that is when we were introduced to this spiritual, a seasonal crowd favorite, so that the hills and everywhere can hear the music. Let us sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn 290. caroling songs and so many more show the Bible's influence in their lyrics and they remind us of its impact every time they are sung. So as we sing these favorite Christmas carols this Christmas season, remember the event that started it all, captured in the first Christmas carol when an angel announced the birth of Jesus and the heavenly host sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven on peace earth and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests now and all thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human community. Holy God, you have given the church the holy name of Jesus, and in him we are your beloved children. Unite us in mission through the power of his spirit. Make us worthy of the name we bear, the name in which we pray. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renewing God, restore your glory to the earth. Awaken humanity to our kinship with all living things that depend on your provisions. Teach us to care. 
care for the earth and safeguard its treasures for those who come after us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Peacemaking God, reconcile the nations, lead those in conflict into negotiation, especially in areas of religious or ethnic strife. End acts of aggression and violence carried out in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Delivering God, rescue our siblings in any danger, especially in communities where disasters and disease threaten. Move those in authority to respond with speed and compassion. We pray for the safety of first responders, health care workers, and all who protect us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situations, or human health conditions. Especially we think of the family and friends of Russell Jacob, who passed away last Monday. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Saving God, redeem us and grant us eternal peace. We give thanks for Russell Jacobs and all the faithfully departed who now rest in your undying love. Made known to us in Jesus our Emmanuel, God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. I will ask that my ushers come forward and collect our morning offering. new year, God. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We bring before you today these offerings of our treasures. Bless these gifts and use them in the work of your realm here on earth. Give strength to the hands that labor, vision to minds that create, and hope to lives who serve. We pray all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Okay, are you ready for us?
forward to be fed and to be blessed. We will do this uh, following the usher's order and we'll start with this.
strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Rini has some announcement to share with us First I was, re I was reminded we need to say our Lord's Prayer Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread as forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen uh, our radio broadcast one week delayed is sponsored this week by clark divdahl chad and jennifer in loving memory of jan Divdahl, who passed away in January of 1987. So we thank Clark and Chad and Jennifer for their continued support to our uh, radio ministry. As Clark said, there um, will be a funeral for Russell Jacobs. It will be held tomorrow morning. Um, there will be a visitation from 10 to 11 and a service beginning at 11 at the Breckenridge Virgin's funeral home with a lunch following. Um, as you can see in our bulletin, there aren't a whole lot of announcements. Uh, this coming week, there will be Wednesday services and um, Wednesday school and, and confirmation will start again. Uh, there's also a smelt fry coming up and uh, that is going to be on January 21st from three to seven. The cost is, it says $15, right? Okay. Um, it's going to include all you can eat, schmelt, coleslaw, dinner rolls, macaroni and cheese, and an ice cream sundae. And it's going to be held at the Wapiton Community Center over in Wapiton on South 4th Street. But we need volunteers to help set up, to help serve, to cashier, general, and whatnot. Um, Harvey Endel is leading this, and uh, uh, we thank him for that. And there are some sign-up sheets on the board in the overflow area. So if you can help that day, stop and, and take a look. Our annual meeting is scheduled for 10.30 following this morning service on January 29th, and we uh, hope that you can all be there. It will, held down, will be held down in Fellowship Hall. Those being the announcements, <laughs> our sending hymn this morning, I think we'll just sing the first verse of the bells of Christmas. Um, there's not a lot of information on this hymn. Um, it's an old hymn, an old Danish hymn. And uh, if, if you'll note when you get to the page that it's on in your bulletin on page 298, it lists way down at the bottom of the page um, some Danish words and I'm not even gonna try and pronounce them. But that is what it was originally called. And so, um, Let's sing verse one of the Bells of Christmas. again for joining us uh, for this Sunday. We wish every one of you a happy 2023. Now I'm going to invite you to rise as you are able for the benediction. Now as you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over and within you to give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.